Have you ever seen a game with such a novel premise that you just had to take a risk and buy it? Mr. Mosquito, published by Eidos under their Fresh Games label, came during my favorite gaming era, that time where PS2 games didn't need to make sense and just had to have a cool style or interesting concept in order to sell. A lot of them felt like a weird experiment some Japanese dudes made on a particularly open weekend, and as a result of their broad approach, a lot of these games would appeal to pretty much anyone open-minded enough to try out some of these cutesier or more bizarre ones on the store shelves. Upon seeing the robotic-looking mosquito and neon yellow lights emblazoned on the front of the box, I bought it without even questioning what it was about. As a kid, I played a few levels and was immediately taken back by the uncanny human models, and I guess due to my raging ADHD, I didn't really care too much for it and only played a few levels before stopping. I also remember when Game Grumps briefly tried the game out for a few episodes they recorded, and I still think about those moments from time to time, so expect to see a clip or two from that when relevant. Mr. Mosquito, spelled just incorrectly in the UK version, is a simulation stealth game, evidently, where the main point of the game is to navigate normal household environments and giant humans, and survive long enough to locate the humans' targetable weak points, suck their blood, and escape before they have the opportunity to squash you. It sounds pretty bland, but naturally since it's made by the Japanese, it ended up being way more charming and memorable than it has any right to be. The first thing you see is a message saying this game contains scenes of explicit itchiness, an obvious parody of Resident Evil's content disclaimer about violence and gore. So already we can get a preview of how this game plans on taking the piss. Mr. Mosquito highlights its premise in the opening with a very slow-paced, almost seductive female voice telling you your objective. You have to suck blood. You must suck and store away as much human blood as possible. The story is basically non-existent. You're tasked with playing as the titular insect Mr. Mosquito, who is probably just a normal insect and is not actually formally named Mr. Mosquito in any way. It's probably not on his license. Who will torment the Yamada family. The Yamadas gather to discuss things, focusing exponentially on the mosquito problem as the game progresses, which is mainly a justification for why the daughter Rina is in the bath, or why mom is fucking dual-wielding cans of raid. As the game begins, we see our three main antagonists gathered in a huddle shot as they discuss the crux of the plot. The mother Kaneo is naggingly insisting that they take their yearly family photo, and the rebellious Rina and her emotionally checked out father Kenichi are arguing against it, saying it's an unnecessary tradition, prompting Kaneo to storm out in a way that only early PlayStation 2 characters can. In the first stage, you'll be shown Rina as she enters her room to the tune of a little jazz theme. And apparently she sleeps with the lights on, what a psycho. While the intro screen shows you your objective and how many collectibles are available. And as soon as you gain control, you'll wish you hadn't. The game has occasional horror vibes thanks to music tracks like Dark One playing as you stalk your target. As the stage begins, you're told the stats of collectibles in the room and then sent on your way. And at first you might notice that the music is pretty unsettling. As a kid, I immediately realized that this isn't some simple insect survival sim. It's a piece of voyeuristic fiction with the music framing the tone as though you're a predator. Most of the music in this game will be a series of string, brass, and percussion to establish tension or action, with jazz and bossa nova sections conveying light-hearted shenanigans later on. It also has a unique control scheme, where Mr. Mosquito feels like a little plane that wants to continuously coast forward with the slightest press of the R1 button, visible in the bottom left corner as a rotating accelerometer thing, making it easy to accidentally bump into obstacles. You'll notice whenever you run into walls or other stuff that Mr. Mosquito effectively spins out, which will be a very steep penalty in certain circumstances. The gameplay involves flying around and finding collectibles, which include heart rings, a tiny item that increases your heart meter by one when you get 50 of them, and sticks out as a sharp pixel against the rest of the stage background, a blood container, which lets you suck extra blood and subsequently unlock New Game Plus after collecting and filling up all of them, and sometimes the ability to activate optional distractions in the room, like a light switch, radio, TV remote, or anything to otherwise annoy the Yamadas. You have to target the giant human's weak spots marked by these squares, and press the circle button to jettison forward with motion blur and puncture the target, at which point you'll rotate the right stick rapidly to suck blood while remaining in the blue zone on the left. Here I come! You better get that shit. You better get that shit. Oh! No! Oh! Pants and skin! Pants and skin! Pants and skin! Pants and skin! Oh! Oh! Go in there! Rotate! Rotate! Suck the blood! Suck the blood! Once you're done with that, you'll press a button to make Mr. Mosquito fly off a fat, satisfied boy. And usually something silly happens to match the level complete porno music. Although nothing can top the ending of the first stage. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Jeez. And just, that was like the end of The Sopranos, dude. Stage two opens up with Rena complaining about her bug bite as her mom probes about whether there's a mosquito in the house. And Rena taunts her mom as if it's the actual boogeyman. But if there's a mosquito here, you'll be next. You must be kidding. <laughs> The next stage opens up in the most terrifying way possible, with the mom just approaching the camera ominously in total darkness as lightning flashes revealing her face, before it's shown that she's looking for something in the family storage room, with that something evidently being a photo album with extremely distorted JPEGs because she keeps commenting on her husband's age. Kenichi looks so young. This is where you'll notice the massive purple clouds in the area, which are meant to be a sort of insecticide that damage you if you come in contact with them. Otherwise, this is a pretty easy stage that ramps up slightly compared to the first level. The blood gauge is here for now, but eventually it'll be here, and you'll actually work up a sweat trying to focus. It's like the Stardew Valley fishing gauge, but more scuffed. I should also mention the battle mechanic, which kicks into gear when you get too close to your target and stay there long enough to get noticed. These battles entail the Yamada family wielding anything they can to destroy you, though they usually just use their hands. If you're close to their legs, they'll try stomping on you or sweeping with their feet. If you're directly in front of you, they'll clap their hands together, and if you're above them, they'll jump up and try to swipe you out of the air. You have to hit them in a few relax points, which you can essentially think of as mosquito acupuncture that gets them to chill out and, I guess, completely forget about your existence. I feel a lot better now. It also cracks me up because all the humans instinctively and realistically begin marching towards you with their palms open and ready to clap. Should the human strike you, it'll send you flying in a random direction as they make an exclamation that gets an instant triple replay for intense action's sake. But in this game's case, it's a total dice roll as to whether it will be funny, annoying, or both. <laughs> When you manage to hit a relax point, the humans will exclaim, Ah, bliss, with Kenichi's inability to pronounce the letter L making this even funnier. <laughs> The only reason to intentionally engage in battle is if you're trying to get the different colored skin unlocks or beat your personal record, but otherwise it's an obstacle to get to your goal. Anyway, you'll suck two vials of blood and buzz off, as mom cluelessly celebrates finding the photo album she kept in storage, complete with fanfare. Ah, at last! Stage 3's intro video is the most obnoxious one so far, with Kaneo acting like a child and Rina repeatedly saying the word aloe weird as Kenichi laughs at something on TV. Rub some aloe on it! I can't believe you, that's so unfair! You have to rub some aloe on it! <laughs> There are a lot of really long pauses in these cutscenes, either because they misjudged how the comedic timing would flow, or because they were okay with how creepy it turned out to be. But the whole game ends up feeling pretty unsettling by the end of it. Uh, you've got an insect bite, Mom! Look, it's swollen! <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Rub some aloe on it. Enter the father, Kenichi, who is the best and most relatable character in the game due to his temper and insane hell-bent dedication to wiping out the mosquito scourge. On top of just being a silly, doughy Japanese husband, he's laying on his side watching some news program with occasional commercials and picking his nose while this intensely dramatic dogfight music is playing. You have to find the right moment to latch onto the top of his head when he says, I need some excitement. But as you'll soon see from the video, if you hover near the target too closely, your danger meter will go into the red. And if you're sucking blood when the wavelength is red, you're going to get swatted, which is an instant death with no checkpoints or anything. Getting swatted is actually pretty easy to mitigate, since you can see the moment the model interrupts its animation loop to buffer the swat animation. So the moment you see that jerky reset motion, you know you're in the clear to fly away with your life intact. Once you complete stage three, dad has a dramatic revelation. He's itchy. <laughs> Now that we've victimized the entire Yamada family, you'd think they'd be pretty pissed off, but they just seem itchy and kind of defeated, and nothing helps itchiness better than a hot bath, which is the setting of the next stage, and was a big push to sell the game using Rina's sex appeal, as the back of the box makes a distinct point about this. There's a reason why this game features its own entry on the giant Tess wiki, and this would be it. You have to wait until she asks, Who is it? Before lowering her head and saying, Oh well. At which point you can penetrate just above her left booba and call it a day, before Mr. Mosquito will fall on the ground and ogle her human parts as he collapses. This stage is actually kind of cool in the sense that the game doesn't have any water physics and counts the bathwater as a physical wall with a splash sound effect. Should you instigate a battle with Rena, she'll whip out the detachable faucet and begin lock-on spraying you from across the bathroom, making a fucking mess, if we're gonna be honest. It's like she's never even heard of the concept of mildew before. How do you like the scalding water, huh? 
I mean, I, I really don't. It's also actually kind of neat that every individual bubble flying around the area is poppable, although it doesn't do anything. I just really like bubbles. With stage five beginning, we see the family getting more upset as they argue about petty stuff like a 5 p.m. curfew and Rena's allowance. And dad is having a really difficult time pronouncing his English. You promised that you'd come home on time when we negotiate your pocket money increase. Also, it's been addressed that these voice actors sound like offensive Japanese stereotypes. But you want to know the wild part? They're all native bilingual Japanese voice talent. Tomoko Kawakami voices Rina, Katsuhisa Hoki voices Kenichi, and Hiroko Nishi voices Kaneo. Just to name a few roles they're known for, Kenichi's voice actor is doing a ton of stuff to this day with big anime like Naruto and One Piece and seems typecast as the gruff old man characters. Kaneo's voice actor seems to do voice acting as a side hobby, with not many vocal credits under her belt, with Marie Inuyashiki being her most recent one, the wife in that old man mech anime I reviewed a while ago. And Rina's voice actress was in too many things for me to name, so I'll just show a few notable ones. And unfortunately, she passed away in 2011 from ovarian cancer, which is going to make my Klonoa 2 video even more sad than it needs to be. Anyway, the point is, these are all native Japanese speakers, but it's easy to assume this was some out-of-touch game from the 2000s that hired a bunch of white people to be like, Oh, Mitsubishi, Toyota, Sushi. Oh! After that phenomenal intro, Mr. Mosquito attempts to suck the mom's blood from her feet, with one being on the front right toe and the other underneath her left foot, which is enough to make anyone anxious, since all she has to do is relax her posture and you're done for. This stage is pretty wacky, since it features a relaxing bossa nova theme as mom walks around the kitchen humming pleasantly to herself as she cooks. The stage features mosquito coils for the first time, which apparently fell out of popular use because of concerns of inhaling insecticides in closed rooms, even though the side effects have been found to be minimal, but after some light googling, I found out there's still one of the most effective mosquito repellents, but if this game is any indication, I don't feel confident about their efficacy. Also, I highly recommend this electric bug swatter thing I got on Amazon instead. I've killed dozens of flies and skeeters all around my house, and it's still going strong. If the Yamadas had this problem nowadays, the game would be one stage with no sequel. In the process of getting one of the blood tanks, I accidentally hit the frying pan it's hiding in, and realized they have different sound effects depending on the object you crash into. Not a big deal, but it shows that this game is more of a deliberately designed experience rather than some elaborate shitpost. I mentioned earlier that you pick up these ring things to increase your health bar, and on my final playthrough, I decided to try and 100% the collectibles when I noticed this microwave with some heart rings inside. Upon flying in, you're presented with text telling you that something good will happen if you can get all the collectibles in time, and if you don't get them in time, this happens. Apparently, something good is the ability to remain living. Like, dang, talk about being creative with your weapon of choice. I like how they framed it as Kaneo not noticing the mosquito as she's microwaving some food. Because if she did this on purpose, she'd look like a massive psycho. This is actually the section I had the hardest time with, since the controls feel kind of slippy and heavy. You're supposed to collect these heart rings which are arranged in a square shape around the inside of the microwave, but you only have 30 seconds, and adjusting your trajectory and turning without stunlocking yourself against the wall is way easier said than done. Originally, I wanted to get every item in the game, but once I realized this would be an obstacle I'd have to face, I pussied out and changed my mind. If you leave at any point, the game says, what a pity, before removing the remaining items in the microwave. You think you fucking know me? When you finish it, Kaneo screws up her meal and manages to make a huge mess out of everything. All thanks to you, which leads to the family's stress level getting even higher. As you start stage six, Kenichi and Kaneo discuss the ruined potato cake dinner, which prompts Kenichi to be quite romantic. <laughs> I don't mind, just as long as you are safe. This cues some Bruce Lee sounds by Rena upstairs, as Kaneo yells at her to keep it down, which segues nicely into stage 6, Rena's bedroom, Rocky Balboa edition, in which she's physically training for her battle with you while she listens to this brazenly cease and desist level of a parody Rocky theme titled Stallone. And I'm not gonna lie, the electric guitar in this song kinda genuinely pumps me up. Fun fact, the shouting you hear in martial arts classes is referred to as kiai, I think that's how you say it, translated very loosely as energy exertion, which is always haya or something similar. I'm telling you this so that you learn something from this video because the next comment is going to disappoint you. While they're obviously saying ha and shouting, it also kind of sounds like they're just repeatedly shouting the word fuck. 
I also love how it's present all the time, even when no other sounds are playing, just to make it extra uncanny, like when you're at the game over screen. You pathetic creature. In order to make progress, you have to smash into her cell phone, which somehow makes her friend call her for a natural conversation that she genuinely wanted to have, I guess. In the process of taking the call, Rena will expose multiple points on the left side of her neck as well as her left fingertip. And now is probably a good time to delve into some of the gameplay problems. The hitboxes in Mr. Mosquito are pretty janky. For the uninitiated, hitboxes are the actual pieces of geometry that interact with other pieces of geometry, generally called hurtboxes in a game. Some games will choose to use spheres, cubes, or capsule shapes because geometrically simplistic shapes are easier for the game engine to render and process, as it has to check dozens of times per second where each hitbox is, and whether it's made any connection with another character's hurtbox. So it's often easiest and most efficient to make very crude hitboxes that are good enough, so as to avoid overloading the game engine or dropping the frame rate. If you've ever played a game where you clearly looked safe but the game still killed you, you've experienced bad hitboxes. Mr. Mosquito is a mixed bag, as I found a lot of the combat hitboxes were pretty lenient. This combined with the Yamada family's aggressive expressions, the game going into slow-mo mode, and paired with the excessive dreamlike motion blur, make for some actually exhilarating duels. The problem comes in when you're trying to land on the blood-sucking hitboxes, as the geometry has a very hard time playing nice. Coming at the target from a perpendicular angle, diagonal angle, or anything that isn't basically straight on means there's a pretty high chance you'll bounce off the hitbox and miss your window of opportunity, as Mr. Mosquito reels from the impact and the enemy has time for a counter. There are other weird strategies I figured out, though. Once I noticed you can still attack the hitboxes you most recently targeted, despite them not currently being targeted, I had a lot more fun dogfighting with these titans, as I didn't feel like I was just ricocheting around the room. Not to mention L2 lets you peek behind you, and R2 lets you quickly turn around, meaning you have opportunities to dart between the enemy's legs, and 180 to get a hard-to-reach spot on their back. As the stage wraps up, we see Rena breaking furniture for no reason as the narrator lectures us. Treat your possessions with respect. She is right though, that's important. You waste a, a lot of money otherwise. <laughs> stage 7. This is the Japanese room where Kenichi likes to amuse himself with flower arranging. Yeah? Flower arranging is the spirit of Japan. Railways are a man's passion. Stage 7 marks the beginning of the stages becoming noticeably more combat oriented and less relaxing and goofy, despite the sleazy dive bar style piano jazz playing atop the poisonous scene. The gloves are beginning to come off now, as the areas will have significantly more hazards and stunlock traps to ruin your run. In the other stages, the characters have a looping behavior, like Kaneo pacing around the kitchen or Rina working out. In this one, Kenichi is kneeling in the center of seven mosquito coils in a room where the floor is coated with mosquito repellent while trying to arrange a flower in a way that brings him pain, whether from heat or thorns. Maybe this way. Oh! I'm no florist, but if you can give me any context as to what the fuck he's doing, please fill me in because it brings me great anguish not knowing. The level hazards gave me a bit of trouble in this one, since the mosquito coils themselves produce a smoke that floats directly upward. And while that's easy enough to avoid, the air conditioner turns on and off at regular intervals that makes the smoke move diagonally, which sounds easy to avoid, but once you touch the very edge of the smoke's hitbox, you're pretty much fucked. And it's surprisingly easy for the smoke to change direction and catch you off guard. Kenichi has two weak points here, his lower lip and his left palm, with the second one only appearing after you finish with the first. It's definitely the start of the game's campier tones, as the stage's ending reinforces, with Kenichi almost dying in real life. Look out! Rina's room gets used again for stage 8, where her friend Ayaka will be hanging out while Rina gets a drink. Ayaka's voice actress is audibly the least experienced, both in acting and in English, as indicated by the sentence. All right, I just stay here. Ayaka's stage is actually quite tough. Her movement cycle leads her to walk counterclockwise around the room, pausing in front of random objects for about three seconds before moving on to the next object and repeating. All of her weak points are difficult to make out, which led me to accidentally crash into the wrong targets once I realized I was aiming at the stereo, or when I was trying to hit a target from the wrong side of the limb and kept crashing into them. Ayaka has some of the funny dialogue out of any of the characters. Her voice actress was clearly given direction to make her sound regal and delicate, since the game introduces her as being from a high-class family, but it ends up making her sound like she's just edging constantly. The line that always gets a belly laugh out of me is once you finish battling Ayaka and she announces, I feel quite happy. 
Once you get those four spots, her glasses suddenly vanish from her face as she exclaims that she's lost them and immediately drops on all fours and crawls around trying to find it. The only way to make progress at this point is to wait until she does yet another counterclockwise loop before you eventually latch onto, ow, <laughs> her left upper eyelid. Somehow she doesn't feel this, but then again, mosquitoes are really delicate landers. With this done, Ayaka also meets her untimely demise. There's a joke, she's fine. With Rena's social life sabotaged, the gloves officially come off, and the entire family is ready to declare war on Skeeter kind. The first boss is Kaneo, who delivers a passionate speech in the exercise room for her reasons to continue to wage war with you. Love! The love of my family! That's what makes me fight! I like the idea that a simple bug is banding an entire family together. I wonder if demolishing a common enemy would be a useful exercise in, like, a group therapy context. Kaneo is definitely the easiest to fight of the three Yamada family members, but she's by no means a pushover. These last few stages are unique in the sense that they don't have the ability to go undetected. You start in battle mode with tons of environmental hazards and must hit their relax points, at which juncture they'll prime their special attack like normal, except with a new yellow weak point that appears for about two seconds, whereupon attacking it makes the target ragdoll and fall down, seemingly unconscious in the most hilarious way possible. Then you have to attack their weak point, suck their blood, and get out out unscathed. These sections in general definitely reflect some of the most fun battles, since you'll be asked to use everything you know about the gameplay so far to persevere through to the end. As I mentioned previously, the Yamadas are much more brazen with the ability to jump and slap, kick you as you're low to the ground, and in many cases used ranged weaponry, which hasn't happened since Rena's bath spray attack. Kaneo Special is a crazy multi-flip move that sprays insecticide absolutely everywhere, which is really fun when you think about how carcinogenic these aerosols are that this family is inhaling. Also, I have zero idea what she's saying when she announces her attack, or even how to type it out. So if you have any clue, once again, please let me know in the comments. But it sounds wild. Kaneo da Miraculous! Like, calendar miraculous? Like, what? I ended up cheesing the fight a little bit by simply hiding underneath some furniture and waiting until she revealed her weakness. But since the individual plumes of bug spray basically have spherical hitboxes, I had to treat all of the big boss attacks like I was in a bullet hell. How are the preparations going? Perfect. The room's full of mosquito killer. Nothing is gonna come out of there alive. We've gotta take extreme measures. Rena's voice actress must have been recording near traffic or on a windy day or somewhere with improper soundproofing because her lines are audibly noisy behind her words. It's really only noticeable with headphones, but let me know if you can hear it on your speakers or phone. You can really hear the cuts to silence. Rena is the semi-final boss and is immediately seen killing a mosquito with some bug spray, which is kind of disturbing since it's the same player model you use, only with a realistic wireframe mosquito mosquito skin that you can unlock later from beating the game. She has her psychotic energy in full display here, as she combines her signature close quarters combat move seen in stage 6 with a magical girl move that she calls Miracle Girl Reina, where she twirls around and sprays her insecticide in a similar manner to her mom. I actually had a pretty hard time here with how wide her aerosol's attack spread is and how randomly it seems to hit me no matter what I'm doing. Her music, Reina Battle, adds so much anxiety to the gameplay since it consists of a ton of bombastic trumpets like some of the earlier stages, but the main thing that keeps this track sounding so terrifying is these shrill, stabbing strings that keep the anxiety running high. With Kaneo and Reina dispatched with little trouble, it's time for the final fight with the man of the household, Kenichi. And he does not disappoint. He's gone completely insane from the inadequacy he feels as a result of letting a tiny bug terrorize his household for weeks at a time, to the point that he's actually wearing a mosquito coil on his head and wants to fight you to the death. His intro line actually sets this battle up as a sort of honorable samurai duel. I mean, I don't know what these six notes followed by a gong are supposed to reference, but they definitely feel like the intro to a sumo-esque showdown. You defeated Kaneo and Rena, but you are mine now. The semi-final stage is without a doubt the hardest one in the entire game, and it gave me a lot of trouble. Kenichi is hellbent on destroying you, and has covered every surface of the room in bug repellent. He himself has also ascended past this mortal realm and developed the ability to shoot fireballs and lightning attacks at will, and they absolutely do not fuck around. Yodori, 
There's one heart refill located around the stage should your health get too low. But as soon as the lights turn red and you hear Kanichi say his opening line, you need to find a large, broad piece of furniture to hide behind as well as a god to whom you should pray. There is absolutely nothing you can do when Kanichi whips out this move, as it shoots a big ball which then breaks into small stars that shatter in every direction. So even if you dodge the initial attack, there's still a really good chance you'll eat shit anyway once it scatters. There are a few spots I have decent luck with. Mainly flying up and away at a diagonal angle seems to have a pretty high success rate if his attack starts and I'm not in a good position to hide, but there are also times in which you'll pick an unfortunate moment to hit one of his relax points, and then the animation begins right as you're recoiling from the stun animation. I didn't check, but I think I got two clears and about 20 tries, so I think 10 to 1 is a pretty alright ratio for a final boss. Kenichi's battle theme, titled simply as Kenichi Battle, is a hopeful yet suspenseful song that's quite quiet compared to the other tracks in the game, and really underscores the modest attempt at victory this little insect hopes to attain, especially since the player needs to focus quite hard during this unforgiving section. Once the song loops and finishes up, it then plays the stabby violin song, Rena Battle, which of course instills sheer anxiety in anyone attempting to focus. The main difficulty with Kenichi's fight comes from the fact that his fireball attack is a complete wild card. If you're too close to him, you simply get one shot, and if you're farther, it's less likely but still entirely possible to get hit and then slam into the wall for extra damage. The walls being covered in poison means you have to be extra careful as you maneuver yourself around the nearby furniture. Since darting for a health reef Phil can end up costing your life if you're not very keen on understanding your velocity and how early you need to stop. Once Kenichi goes down, you have to suck his bald head until you finish. But the scary thing about these is the fact that the blood meter moves too slowly to get all of the blood tanks in one attempt, which means you'll have to jump off to avoid dying, which restarts the battle phase, meaning you'll have to pray to RN Jesus in the hopes that you survive long enough to knock him down a second time, which, spoiler warning, you probably won't. It's actually really impressive to go from the beginning of the game where I had no idea how the most basic movement mechanics work and bumped into everything constantly, to the ending where I'm controlling Mr. Mosquito with precise movements, breaking at the the right times and otherwise feeling like a smooth operator as I dart around the angry titans and pacify them with my proboscis. I also require any native Japanese speakers to help me figure out Kenichi's final attack phrase. It sounds like he's saying Kenichi de Fusion before almost cutting himself off to say Shinare, which I've looked up and surmised that he might be saying give up, but it's really difficult to tell. Once you manage to finish off Kenichi, he falls down on the floor and announces, I'm just going to take a short nap. Before you're swiftly introduced to the final level, stage 12, where the narrator tells you this is your final autumn to suck blood before winter rolls around, placing a decent bit of pressure on you since it spells a time limit. We open on Ayaka being confused and alone before seeing the smoke and concluding a fire is happening, and the stage opens up showing her running away as the camera zooms in on our hero, before the stage subtitle is revealed to be The Final Blood Suck, which sounds like the finale of an extreme BDSM video. You have a time limit of 5 minutes and 30 seconds, but it's actually not too bad since the timer only counts down when you're flying around. The moment the blood sucking begins, it pauses. You have to get to each family member and extract 1 to 3 tanks of blood from each within the time limit, while the blue bar oscillates wildly like a coked up Stardew Valley fishing meter. Their order of difficulty goes Reina. Kaneo and Kenichi with Kenichi himself being a bit of a nightmare to stealth because of how hostile his bar is. There's no actual problem with flying off and waiting until the enemy aggro meter calms down, since the only danger is if they swat you during the blood suck. So it's mainly just a little annoying that battles are replaced with awkwardly looping around the room until you're unnoticed again. Once you finish the final suck and fly towards the doorknob, you're seen escaping the smoldering house with your life intact, while a fanfare plays as you look back at the nightmare you've caused. God, what have I done? We're shown one last cutscene where the Yamadas are once again in their normal huddle shot and discussing the family photo with numerous visible mosquito bites, and Reina is naturally hesitant to take the photo, while Kenichi insists that it has to be today, before revealing to Kaneo that he's been playing dumb for the entirety of the game regarding the significance of the photo. Today's an important wedding anniversary, isn't it? Oh, Kenichi. We then see a full-scale shot of all three family members lining up to take a timed photo, and it is absolutely amazing how uncanny their animations are, which is likely a result of them being hand-animated. As they line up to take their photo, they see Mr. Mosquito photobomb and ultimately ruin their picture, before we cut to an aggressively funky slap bass, as we see an aerial view of the family having very physically animated conversations, and otherwise engaging in some final antics before they go inside and the game cuts to a photo slideshow. A few of these are cute, like Mr. Mosquito sitting on Reina's stereo dial and laying there a fat, content pile of polygons, but the others emit a deeply unsettling aura that can't be ignored. 
After the credits are over, which might I add showcase a significantly larger team than I ever would have expected, we see a cute Metal Gear Solid 3-esque ending screen showing your stats and final grade. And if you're like me, you'll see this poorly punctuated, centrally aligned paragraph telling you that you didn't fill all the extra blood tanks, and you gotta do it again. That's essentially the full game, but if you manage to find all of the 16 hidden blood tanks in the game and fill them up by the final stage, then you'll unlock New Game Plus, also known as Second Summer. There's not a lot to go into, but the AI is more aggressive and some of the conversations and voice lines are funny, like Reyna being confused by Ayaka's voice lines remaining unchanged. Wow, this is the first time that I've seen your room. What are you talking about? You came here a year ago. I'm gonna get some drinks. Beyond that, it's not worth much examination. Aside from pointing out that you get to play the game twice and that Kenichi's final boss stage is just as bullshit as before. Fuck you, Kenichi. There are a few hidden secrets, like the unlockable skins that let you look like Kameo and Kenichi, and I wish I didn't see this human centipede abomination, as well as a silly little biking two-player minigame called Reckless Cyclist, which recycles some sound effects from the main game and is mainly a momentum-based multiplayer game where you push the other player over the edge. But I only own one PS3 controller, and I doubt this game has much depth to it. In conclusion, Mr. Mosquito was a fun experience to revisit from my teenage years, and I'm surprised to say that it actually has a lot of love and care put into what could have easily been a throwaway gag with impossible controls and uninteresting characters. What we ended up with was a super memorable and zany experience that B-movie fans will get a huge kick out of, and I don't think anything will ever replicate its charm as long as I draw breath. There was a sequel that was released as a Japan exclusive known as Ka 2 Let's Go Hawaii, since a mosquito is called a Ka in Japanese, and I guess they just just called it Mosquito 2. Sure. For some reason, my intuition is telling me it looks really bad and super cursed. Still looks like it'll be a good time, especially since I can't find a single walkthrough and there are language barrier elements that are sure to be frustrating to deal with, so let me know if you want to see me give that a try. I'm sort of on an old PS2 game kick lately, so feel free to drop some suggestions that you think might make for good content. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching and take care.